The red button records video in any of the still's exposure modes. Switching to video mode provides several benefits. It switches the display to video aspect, displays the audio meters, and uses video specific settings in the menu. There's a video specific exposure mode, and the custom keys can be configured for video specific options. I wish there was more. Now, incidentally, don't look for a custom key setting to change the shutter button to start and stop video recording. That's on movie screen four. HD can be recorded in AVC HD and XAVCS. AVC HD supports 60 frame interlace recording up to 24 megabits. XAVCS has frame rates from 24 to 60 with data rates up to 50, as well as 120 frames at 100 megabits. In 4K, 24 and 30 up to 100 megabits. And if you're worried that these files might be too taxing to edit or to post on social media, proxy recordings, which can be saved simultaneously, are HD 729 megabit files. And these are the NTSC frame rates. The 25 based PAL rates appear when you switch the setup screen to option. All HD frame rates from 24 to 120 record using the full sensor width. In 4K, the 24 frame mode crops in, and even more with 30. However, that can be undone. By default, the APS-C Super 35mm switch is set to auto. Turn it off and there's no crop. Incidentally, this switch handles APS-C format lenses. If it's off and you mount an APS-C lens, there will be a vignette. In video, auto and all the non-underlined ISO settings are available. Sony allows a video shutter speed as slow as one quarter second. All the white balance options are available. A custom white balance can be captured. All the creative styles can be selected and the picture effects can all be used for video. But for video, the depth and breadth of the color and dynamic range adjustments that can be made using picture profiles is unique. The headline feature here are the gamma controls, settings that modify the sensor's output to control the response to light. The gamma curves can bring out detail in shadow using the cine settings and extend the dynamic range using S-Log 2 or 3. Gamma settings also include HLG, hybrid log gamma, which is activated automatically on some new displays that detect it in the incoming signal. HLG also extends the range but includes a compromise if the display is not capable. And that's just one of the settings. There are enough controls here to make even the most sophisticated and technically adept video engineer ecstatic. You may wish to experiment with the color modes to find a setting that captures your creative vision. Personally, I reduce the saturation and the detail to make my productions look a little less like broadcast video. While the S-Log settings are powerful, if your image doesn't have a wide dynamic range, it may reduce the quality, particularly if you're recording internally. External recordings can have a higher bandwidth, so provide more data to manipulate. It works like this. With picture profiles off, this chart is illuminated and exposed properly. You can see that on the camera's histogram and the overlaid waveform on my external recorder. When I switch the gamma setting to S-Log2, the range is compressed. Blacks are raised about 10% and the whites are reduced 30%. And that provides lots of room for the larger dynamic range you'll find in exterior scenes. S-Log3 further compresses the signal. Now the whites are under 40%, which is great if you're shooting a scene with bright sun, sun and shadows. If, if you do use these advanced gamma settings, use the monitor gamma disp assist to choose the right mode or select auto to keep it simple. The actual S-Log recordings look dull and washed out. The disp assist makes the same adjustments that you'll make while editing so you'll see a better image. For my last In a Canoe video, we shot take one with the Cine 2 gamma, but that wasn't enough range for the sun to shade variations. We recorded a take two with S-Log 2. That requires adjustments in editing, but once they're done, 
clearly the scene is improved. While scenes that have a wide dynamic range can benefit from this ability, scenes that don't require it will end up with a compressed dynamic range. And as you try to restore that, you may find you've lost quality. I'm not sure why you'd purposely run a scene that doesn't have much dynamic range through the dynamic compression of S-Log and then try to recover it in post. Before we get to the S and Q video modes, for slow motion, the 120 frame mode records with audio and at the fastest HD data rate. In editing, the footage can be slowed to four times in a 30 frame production without needing interpolated frames. Switch the dial to S and Q for time lapse and silent slow motion. There's no crop in the S and Q modes, either at a faster or slower speed. And there are three record settings, but what you're selecting here is actually the playback frame rate. Frame rate is the recording rate. The screen shows what the combination will provide, which goes from 60 times fast, kind of like time lapse, to 5 times slow. This is 4 times and doesn't require any post production. There's no 30 minute video recording time limit on the A7R4 and I was not able to provoke the A7R4 to overheat at 24 Celsius while recording 4K continuously for over an hour and the camera didn't feel particularly warm. Recording continues seamlessly from one card to the other and cards can be swapped while the camera continues to record. That's a great feature. The manual indicates that at 40 degrees Celsius 4K recordings may be limited to 10 minutes. To cut down on that possibility, change Sony's auto power off temperature from standard to high. Other than to say the camera may be too hot to hold, Sony doesn't indicate any negative consequences and the camera will still overheat and shut off. Sony's support for external monitors and recorders remains challenging. In stills and HD video modes, connecting an external monitor blocks out the LCD and viewfinder. Touch is no longer available. Use Setup HDMI to turn the info display off. Now the LCD and viewfinder work, including touch, and the external monitor displays a clean image. To continue, I've put those options on my menu to reduce navigation. With HD video, all record settings output 1080-60. To output 24, set the record setting to 24, switch HDMI resolution to 2160 1080, then the 2460 switch to 24. In 4K mode, there is no info display option, and the output does switch with the record setting regardless of the HDMI settings. However, if you want to downres the output to HD, the HDMI resolution does work. By the light of a single candle, ISO 32000 with a 160 shutter and f2.8 provides a brighter scene than I expected. It's slightly mushy, but reasonably clean. In order to record the screen overlay view, this is HD 30 at 50 megabits. Let's lose the overlay and switch to 4K 30 at 100 megabits. I am using autofocus continuous, and although face and eye detect are on, in this low light, I'd be more surprised if it did work than to see that it doesn't really. And now, with the ISO down to 12,800. This looks like a candlelit scene. White balance is K2500, that's as low as it goes. I'm using the neutral setting. Let's make one more adjustment to the Cine 2 gamma setting, which I prefer for this scene. I will say that Sony seems to have lost some of their video mojo. For a long time, Sony cameras were the best choice for video. Now, not so much. In fact, there's been little change in the video features and functions over the last two years while the competition has been busy. Video and stills on this camera are interdependent, so there's a need to reconfigure when going from one to the other. There's no 4K cinema aspect. The data rate tops at 100 megabits, the recordings, internal and external, are limited to 8-bit, color sampling tops at 420. We could have expected better, including support for HEVC. All these issues leave this camera behind its competition.
As with other Sony models, the Zebra Setting Exposure Assist provides a wide range of options, from 70 to 100 plus in five-step increments. A custom version enables both a setting as well as a range. A second custom option provides a lower limit adjustable in one-step increments. And there are new options to number and name video files. Thank you! Using series means that numbers continue to increment even when a card is formatted just like stills files. Then there are four name formats as per the sample at the bottom of the screen. Standard, title, which is created on the next screen, date and title, or the reverse. Now this wasn't a deal breaker, but certainly this is nice to have. The ports are on the left side, under the video cover, mic in, headphone out, and micro HDMI. A second cover hides the USB-C and Sony multi-connector. The third covers the flash sync terminal. Sony includes an HDMI cable clamp to secure the connection. Now I've always liked Sony's panorama mode, but here you'll have to take the photos and paste them together in Photoshop. Since you're starting with 60 megapixel files, this actually results in a much larger image than any panorama mode I've seen. The A7R4 does do a complete reinitialization, which takes you back to language and time. However, not all settings are reset. Changes to picture profiles and your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings are not affected. Those settings have independent resets. In addition to the three desktop Imaging Edge apps, there are iOS and Android mobile versions. The iOS iPad version is clumsy and flaky. Using Bluetooth, settings can transfer time and location information from the device to the camera. However, it rarely connects on its own. Even when the Bluetooth connection is forced, the app fails to recognize it. The Wi-Fi connection, even with the QR code, routinely fails. Then there was the Bluetooth standoff, where both the camera and the app wanted the other to provide the next step. To transfer an image to the device, select Send to Smartphone Funk. Okay, isn't it odd that they figured out how to make the text scroll, but the word function is still oddly truncated? Just saying. And this is on the Network tab. I expected to find this on the Playback menu. Anyway, select the images on the camera or on the device. For the latter, the app displays the images available for selection. The image is transferred as a 2 meg thumbnail or the original size. Remote shooting is activated from the camera. The app's capabilities are extensive. Enable setting the mode dial to select the exposure modes, the video modes, and the S and Q modes from the app. And then aperture, shutter, and ISO can all be set. White balance, focus mode, drive mode, metering mode can all be selected. With manual focus, there's a slider and it operates slowly by tapping. With autofocus, tap the screen to select the focus point. It doesn't display, but press the shutter to focus and snap. Then the image is transferred. The menu provides extensive options to adjust, well, some of the settings anyway. There's a mirror mode for selfies and vlogging and saved settings can be retrieved and applied. Uh, no option to switch cards if you saved your settings on the other card. There's the interesting capability to power one or more cameras on and off. That activates the multi-image transfer mode. In playback, Sony displays the file name and the settings. A second thumbnail display includes color histograms and a few more settings. Sony's playback capability does not include any manipulation like cropping or raw processing. The camera's grip is nicely shaped and contoured for my hand. There's improved clearance for my right hand next to the lens. And after hearing some impressive anecdotal stories about Sony's durability and weather sealing, Sony has further improved it on the A7R IV. An extensive manual is available online and as a downloadable PDF. The Z series battery is rated for 670 images. The camera can be USB powered and an optional battery grip that holds two batteries is also available. There are very few demanding photographers who will need this camera, 
But that's not to say the rest of us won't appreciate it. The focus is exceptional, and the ability to sign IAF to a button on the lens and have it grab focus instantly makes candid shooting simple and nearly foolproof. Although I appreciate that there may be some grumbling, the a7R4 excels at all the things you'd like a camera to do, and then some. But that said, not everything is perfect. I've yet to find a perfect camera. However, once you've overcome some of the quirks, and many of them are learning curve issues, this is a camera that provides all of the capabilities, features, and functions anyone could ask for. If you'd like to get an advanced peek at what I'm working on, please follow my Instagram feed. The link is below, where you'll see photos and previews of upcoming reviews. And always remember to keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. If you have questions or comments, I enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. And I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. Your interest and support is appreciated. And if you are thinking about subscribing, remember that it's free and there's no obligation.